player into Ghost House. Um, so a couple of things that I noticed over the few years I've been reading the Bible that you might have, because um, I mean, uh, so much in the detail, you know, one little word can change everything in there. And sometimes we read it and we sort of assume what it's talking about, but I'll, I'll just explain in them, um, you know, I'll just get straight to it, you know, the, the list that's quite incredible, I think you'll agree. Okay, in the beginning of chapter 2, it says, um, well, I've got the NIV version, so it'll be a bit different. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating he'd done. Right, now I love this because this is going to sound absolutely nuts, but this is actually taught in the New Testament. That whole thing there, he rested from all his work. Right, um, that basically includes everything, like today, tomorrow, the next day. So basically, at the end of the seventh day, um, God had made everything, all the, the coincidences we come across in our life, the little acts of God that happened, the miracles, the bad things, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, that's um, preordained, you know, which leads you on to the next point, which is also taught in the New Testament, um, in the book of Hebrews that I keep talking about, basically that if this was all done on the seventh day, then by the seventh day, that means that we're not in the seventh day yet. We're, we're still sort of in day six, you know. Now, the really important thing here is that the seventh day is called God's rest, okay. When, when Jesus came into the world, he basically was trying to prepare people for the kingdom of heaven, for the, you know, and... When he was on the cross, he basically said, it is finished. Now, what was finished? Um, you could say he paid for our sins. Um, you could also say maybe for the people that believe, day six had ended. And they then, uh, it teaches us in Hebrews as well, that if, if you believe, you basically, you, you enter God's rest, which means that you're basically in the Sabbath. So I'm a believer myself, so I'm basically in the seventh day. That's why Christians are such a big conflict for non-Christians, because we're in different days, in according to this. This is why I love the Bible, because it's so, like, mind-blowing. If you, But that's what I mean, just that one little thing there, all his work, one day there. Another thing I was going to pick up on um, in the Garden of Eden, you, know, you mentioned um, Eve being punished, the same as the others, which you're not, which you're not wrong, but still there's very interesting wordplay going on here. As I've said in other comments, you know, I mean, I don't mean to sound like um, frustrated or anything, but it's so hard to explain this stuff, you know, because I, I really believe in, I really, I really want everyone to, because it, really, it benefits your life completely if you've got faith. So sometimes I come across a bit, you know, like I'm getting pissed off, which I, I guess I'm getting to that point. But um, right when God's given up the curses, He says to everyone, "This is something I've noticed." says, um, uh, what does God say? Oh yeah, when he's hung out the curses, first of all he says to the serpent, because you have done this, that's a key point, because you have done this, curse you above all livestock, so on, so on. We'll skip down to the man, he says to the man, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, so he says, because you've done this, because you've done this. When he comes to Eve, he says to the women, he doesn't say because you've done this. He just says, I'll greatly increase your pains in childbearing. And the pain you'll give birth to ch children, and your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Now this is sort of like, um, see I haven't fully, I don't fully comprehend that, but I know that has something to do with, it's a pro prophecy about, Mary giving birth to Jesus, Jesus. I know it's something to do with that because, because, because as I was trying to say, the Bible, the main thrust of the Bible is everything is to do with they sinned in the garden. As you said, in a couple of pages, it was all screwed like. But, but God is merciful. He's not a God of wrath because he, he, even before they sinned, he, he'd already planned the sacrifice that he himself was going to make for for them. So Christ was prepared to come and do do that thousands of years before it even happened. So 
there's prophecies laced in all this stuff and um like just a little bit like I said, it's all in the details. Some words have changed and so on. Also another point another exciting thing in this chapter in chapter three is you know when you were saying um you read that um there was a cherubim there and a flaming sword to guard the way to the tree of life. Another Christian alerted me to this, but that word the way to the tree of life. They weren't guarding the tree of life, they were guarding the way to the tree of life. Now what does Jesus say he is? He says he's the way, the truth, and the life. So um, how many ways are there? There's only one way to the tree of life. And he's laying claim to be the way and the life, and the truth, you know? So there's only, there's only one truth, one life. That's my username, Jesus, is the tree of life. That's, you know, that's, that's a profound moment. Because there's only one eternal life, you know. Um, anyway, I hope this is beneficial.